Hello everyone. Today we're going to do something that you guys have requested many, many times. We put out a post on Instagram asking you to send us your aquariums to review. So that's what I'm going to do today. Oh, cool. It's good scape, isn't it? That's crazy. Oh. <laughs> First and foremost, if you have sent us your aquarium but it's not in this video, I'm sorry. We have received over 200 applications for this. If your tank is not included, it doesn't mean anything. It's just we had way too much aquariums to review and we're gonna include the ones that I could actually say something meaningful about. If you hear too much negative things, that's because that's what you can learn from and I'm gonna rarely highlight the positives. And of course, most of this is up for taste. So, let's begin. I like the main composition of the aquascape. Plant health seems generally good. This is quite a fresh aquarium. Yeah, it's two months old. But at two months stage, most people have lots of allergies. I'm missing the stem plants from this area of the tank. Uh, there is a patch of what's probably Rotolatra in both corners. And there's this huge V-shaped gap uh, behind the rocks. It makes the tank a bit flat. I see that there are some plants here on the left side which just need some time to come out. That's gonna give another layer behind the left side rock. But on the right side, uh, it's a bit too two-dimensional, uh, to be honest. Uh, but that's it. Just let these stem plants run in into that gap and you're good to go. So, in this tank, uh, it's the, the lower left corner and a bit the lower right as well is a bit too dark. Now, this might just be the photo. I can see that uh, contrast has been pulled up all the way on the edit, uh, which is if, if you plan to apply a tank on a contest, for example, don't do this, don't destroy the colors of your aquarium. But, I'm not talking about the photo, I'm talking about the tank itself. Probably there are some highlights in here as well. Uh, you can put some more plants in these areas, so it's not as dark as it seems now. And the other thing that's weird for me that the tank is 12 months old, so it's been running a year, and the stem plants in the background uh, seem a bit thin. I mean, if you would trim these, like there's Ludwiga Palustris, I think, and Rotala Valici behind. Um, if you would trim these regularly and uh, always put the top back uh, into the soil, they would grow much denser and uh, you would have a nicer look. Okay, this is something you rarely see on our channel. This aquarium is two years old. Now, uh, this is a frequent question we get uh, from clients and viewers. Is how long can you keep up these tanks? Um, you can actually keep them running for years if you do the maintenance properly and take care of your plants in the aquarium. And this is a great example. Uh, having a tank running for two years with such uh, good condition of plants in general, uh, it's not the easiest thing to do and it's really well done here. A bit on the critique side, uh, the road in the middle going through is one, it's in the middle. I, I see that it's not, it's slightly off to the left, but it should be more to the left side or to the right side. So we always talk about golden ratio and so on. The rule of thirds apply uh, to, to any aquascape. So usually you should aim for any um, special things in your scape to be in one third positions of the tank. So in here, the road should be more to the left and it's a bit too straight. Now, if you just give a slight curve to it and it would actually disappear behind one side, either side of the hardscape, uh, and I wouldn't see the back glass behind it, that would improve the, the tank a lot. Uh, this is a type of tank that I love and I never build. So th this is old school NA style. This is something that would come out of an old Amano book, classic 60 liter, uh, plant running to the surface and laying over, great use of space. 
And this is a nice piece for your working station or, or your desk at home or end of your kitchen table. These small nano tanks, this is how you should uh, actually use them and build them. Uh, it's visibly well maintained. The Ludwig in the back could use a bit of trimming and it could be a bit more dense. The carpet needs some time as well. I assume that this is running without CO2 and that's why the uh, Eleocaris is not fully developed after six months. But it's going to grow together and actually it doesn't really bother me that I see the patches. It, it looks good, uh, to be honest. This is a good example of a good tank with good plant health and with the problem of not wanting to trim the plants when you should. At this point, it's, it's just way too many plants, not enough hardscape is visible and yeah, I know it's difficult, but get those scissors out and just, just clean out the plants a bit. The hardscape you have in is good. I'm missing bigger pieces of rocks from both sides actually. And in here, you never want to see the bottom of your stem plants, they never look nice. You can easily cover this with another piece of rock. Yeah, but, but the plants seem healthy. The carpet is very close to a good trim. So you don't have much time to waste on that uh, because if you let it go this thick and you just keep going, at some point it's gonna float up the whole carpet. So here we have something a bit more old school. Actually, this is, I love it, it with the neons. This environment is perfect for them. There is some algae on the rocks, but this is actually the level that for this uh, kind of setup, it adds to the scape. It makes it much more natural. Uh, okay, I really like this one. I'm missing a bit more detail from the sand. Uh, it's a bit too clean, and I see that you, you actually added some gravel to it, but there should be way more. And I could also imagine small pieces of iron wood dropped around. Obviously, it would need some time to, to be soaked so it actually uh, stays underwater. But yeah, just throw some more gravel and rocks and pieces of wood around on the bottom of the tank and you have a very nice scape. If you would put on a white vinyl on the background, it would make the, all the hardscape and the plants pop much more. I'm glad that you didn't put moss on the wood because it would cover it up and actually the hardscape itself looks really good so yeah, good choice. Oh, cool. A forest scape with flames in the back. I love this. That, that's it, that's all I can say, I love this. Especially for a 64 litre tank and I love the algae on the wood. I mean, I don't know if this is intentional or not, but it it adds to the scape. It's a good scape, isn't it? Oh, now this, this pains me. This is, these type of fish don't belong in, well, when I say small tank, it's 200 liters. It's not small, but it's small for discus and angelfish, and especially this many. So if like you have a pair of discus in 200 liters, fine but these fish don't have the best times of their lives. Please don't, uh, don't make them suffer by, by putting this many big sized fish in such a tank size. And, uh, and also angelfish and discus, uh, you usually don't recommend them uh, to be kept together. The Renunculus inundatus, one of the plants that I have never used because I hate how it looks and it looks great in this one. Only there should be a bit on the left side as well, but not much. The red light is up to taste. The photo is a bit weird on the angle, so I'm not sure about this, but on this photo, the top looks very flat, but it could be a bit more effective or, or a bit more aggressive uh, on, the, on the trimming. It could either be trimmed like this, or it could be trimmed like this. Either way would be great. Just don't have it as flat as it seems on the photo, but again, it might be just a photo. This tank is a great use of the dwarf gouramis. I love these fish and I can never fit them into an aquascape. They, usually they don't go too well because of their size, their color and so on. But in this one, it's, it's great. I love them. 
Maybe I would have chosen a smaller leaved Ludwigia in here, like the Palustris or something, because these leaves are too big for the ratios of the tank. But other than that, it, it looks good. Classic old school, especially with the blue background and the Gouramis, it's, it's great. I, I could imagine this in my living room. Yeah, this again, classic Iwagumi. You guys know that you're gonna win me over with this. Good use of space, nice elevation towards the back. I actually like this. Uh, I don't know what kind of plant this is, but I like how it hits the surface. There should be more, much, much more. And uh, I would let it run out to both sides, which you know, it's, sometimes it's not up to you, it's up to the flow. But if you can manage it to, to come out behind a rock like a V-shape, uh, at about three times this amount, it would be great. I love the, the two main rocks. And this one I'm not sure about. It's, I don't see how it should stand. It's not standing in the way that you put it in originally, that's for sure. Isn't this the tank of the guy from the workshop? Mark, okay, yeah, I've met Mark in person and this is the tank where he showed me that he can have an Alcaris Articularis Mini without CO2, which I said is not possible. I mean, we know it survives, but we never had it grown to a carpet. He's done it. Okay, this is the best nano tank I've seen so far in this review. Um, it's, it's great. When I looked at the tank first, I would have said it's easily 60, 80 liters. Now I see that it's 34. It's just really good. The use of plants, having the big leaves in front, small leaves in the back, actually does some crazy trimming with the rotalas. It's very nicely done. I could imagine some discus in this one. Either discus or angelfish. It screams for them. Sometimes we talk about this on the channel. When you use a shorter light for a longer tank, usually it leads to issues where you don't have enough light on the sides and so on. But in some cases, it can actually work pretty, pretty well. In this setup, it gives you so much drama that the, the sides are dark and the middle is lit properly. And again, if you like complement this with some discus, for example, that actually like to have shady areas uh, around the tank, it, it would be great. I like this whole setup. I mean, the tank and the things around it, the plants, it's, it just gives you the feeling that this is, this is a nice corner in someone's home at the end of their desk. Maybe it's a bit too shallow, so just watch out for that better not to jump out. Okay, so this one, um, sand in the front should be straight. Just flatten it out and um, have some details in the foreground. Uh, throw around some pebbles on the sand, make it less clean. Other than that, love it. Love how much I can see of the wood, actually, the hardscape itself. Maybe I could imagine a bit more red. So there's a huge red patch here in the left. If you have some space uh, in the back, I could imagine some red rotalas or even the same palustris sticking out behind these bushes and it would actually be visible in the reflection on the top. That would balance out the colors of the tank a bit. I'm a bit thrown off by the ratios. I mean, this is 300 liters, it's somehow it feels smaller. And is this Utricularia carpet? That's crazy. I love the fish choice as well. It's really cool how they swim through the, uh, the wood. Um, yeah, that's it. A bit, bit on the, the plant choices, the leaf sizes, somehow they destroy the size of the tank. Um, but I can't really grasp why. And uh, the red in the back, it should be a bit more visible from the front as well. So now I can in here I can slightly see it behind the other plants, but most of it is visible in the surface reflection only. But on the right side, I can only see it in the surface. But maybe it's just a very weird angle of the photo. Now that could explain the plant size issues as well. Thousand liters. That's cool. Keeping angelfish and discus together is not the best idea because their um, immune systems are different and there are some diseases that the uh, scalaris are immune to and the discus are not and this can be an issue later on as well so you could basically kill your discus with keeping them together with uh, with angelfish obviously it's not gonna happen 
all the time, but it could. The tank itself, I love it. I think this is a tank that you can see from both sides. So that's why it's a bit shallow in the middle, but, uh, but it looks very natural and I love the use of uh, plants on top. It's maybe a bit too much plants, too many types of plants inside, but they're gonna sort it out themselves. So these plants, they're gonna take over each other. And in such a small tank, you might have issues with the Monte Carlo up here because it will just grow on everything else. But yeah, it definitely needs time. The scape itself looks good. But finally, someone doesn't have the road in the middle. It's shifted towards the right. Still not in golden ratio, but, uh, but in this one, actually, it doesn't bother me. It's like, because the hardscape is much more heavy on the left side. Uh, and that tricks my mind into thinking that the road is uh, far towards the right. And it's again a tank that I would love to see at home. Simple lush green, big pieces of hardscape and good balance. <sighs> okay, only issue in this tank, it's... Uh, all this looks amazing. And then this huge piece of Cryptocorine is just throwing it off. Take this out and put in some smaller plants like you did in the front of it. Um, and also have some details on the sand, throw around small pieces of rocks and pebbles. And yeah, the rest is really good. Just put on a vinyl on the back of the tank. It's, I mean, that wallpaper behind it, actually, it, it's nice, but you don't want to see that through the tank. I mean, unless that's the goal, but it takes away from the aquarium itself. Um, you don't see the fish so clearly, you don't see the plants so clearly, so yeah, I would just full on white or black or even maybe some colored uh, vinyl. The tank needs time, it's visible, it's uh, only one and a half months old and maybe put some rocks in here so you create a barrier between the sand and the soil because this all is gonna just run out onto the sand and you're never gonna be able to keep it clean this way. Oh, okay, this is my favorite so far. Okay, so this is a proper contest tank. That's clear that this has been built for contest. This is immaculate. The only thing is the sand should be flat in the front. There shouldn't be this dims and uh, there's some algae or something going on in between the sand and the glass should be cleaned but maybe it has been done for the contest photo itself. Adrian has met him in the UK, really nice bloke and a really nice tank. I actually know this aquarium because I've seen it uh, on Instagram a couple of times and yeah, it's just great. I would actually cover the background with, uh, with vinyl. The stripes on the wallpaper take away some of the tank for me, uh, some of the enjoyment. So I would put on a white vinyl but that's it for the scape and the plants. They're good. Cat seems nice, so. This is just great. Small Ivakumi, 60 liters and Utricularia carpet. It might just be me, but I could imagine a bit more rocks and the whole scape could be higher and the background lifted towards the back. It would give you more green. Uh, it would give you a bigger surface uh, when you look at the aquarium and there would be less space on top, which is a bit too empty now. But I could actually, uh, yeah, I could have this. I could imagine having this in my home. So that's it, guys. Um, thank you for sending your aquariums. Again, I'm sorry if yours wasn't included. If you don't want to miss such opportunities as this one was, then follow us on social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. That's where we post about these occasions. And please let us know in the comments if you want to have more like this in the future. Thank you for joining me and see you next time. Goodbye.